Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. During the final hours of Jesus' earthly ministry, he prophesied to his apostles the coming of Roman armies that were to lay waste the temple and the city of Jerusalem. Luke 21, When ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee the mountains, for those be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. The sign of her desolation was to be the advance of the enemy to her walls. This siege was to end in capture, and no angel of the Lord would stalk by night through the sleeping host to stiffen sleep into death, nor would any valor of the besieged avail. <clears throat> Defending the city was to be hopeless from the first. Usually those in the open country took refuge in the capital when invaders came, but this time staying within city walls was to throw away the last chance of safety. The Christians obeyed and fled across Jordan to Pella. <clears throat> those who despised Jesus' warning, well, they perished. The reason why resistance was futile, Jesus said, was because these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written might be fulfilled. Behind the Roman army is the God of Israel. To dash against their armors is to throw oneself on the thick center of the Almighty's shield, and none who dare do that can prosper. Submission to his mighty hand, when it is set to execute justice, is the only way to escape being crushed by it. But a gleam of hope shoots through the stormy prospect. The Lord followed his prophecy of the dreadful consequences to doomed Jerusalem of rejecting heaven's greatest gift with another, strange by contrast, of dawning spring. And he spake to them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh to hand. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, Know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. In a manner so typical of God's dealings, the same combination of events that brought disaster to one group brought benefit to another, and ultimately to all the world. Historically, the fall of Jerusalem was a powerful factor in the deliverance of the church from Jewish swaddling bands which hampered its growing limbs. So long as many Christians made their home in the land of their fathers, the crying need for the gospel to spread could not be met. But when the city lay in ruins, the Christians were scattered to the four winds, and when they went, they did what believers have always done. They took the story of their holy salvation with them and told folks about it wherever they happened to be. Knocking over the Christian lamp only served to spread the flaming oil, and so the light of the gospel was brought to the Gentiles. It's just that same way for all Christians. The destruction of what can perish brings fuller vision and possession of what cannot be shaken. To Christ's friends, all things work for good. So the parable, which at first sight seems strangely out of phase with what Jesus has just spoken of terrible suffering, becomes blessedly significant and fitting. The delightful blossoming of the trees, the first shadings of green fields and melodies of the songbirds, for telling the glories of summer is a strange emblem of such a tragedy, and summer itself is a still stranger one of that solemn last judgment. But the might of humble trust in him who comes to judge makes his coming summer-like in the light and warmth with which it floods the soul and the root, rich fruitage which it produces there. Jesus means to be that to you and me. Fig trees bloom and bear fruit gradually as the warm sun of summer beams its stimulating rays on the going tea tree. So the Christian life is a continual development, but it is created to prosper and bear fruit in the strangest of circumstances. Many a child of God has provided a rich spiritual harvest to the world in what have seemed the darkest of conditions. Indeed, that is in many ways the home of God's church. Have you talked to him today? You have been listening to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at g-o-d-s-f-i-v-e minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.